In this example, we'll be performing a stress life analysis where we have multiple loading scenarios. Uh, full details of this example are in the PDF linked in the video description below. As you can see, we're analyzing aircraft rear engine mounting lug as shown here. The first thing you should go ahead and do is download the zip file that is also included in the video description below. There's a link. Um, go ahead and extract all of the files to the folder, say on your desktop. You should have the mounting lug national input file, the .dat file, and then four DAC files as shown here. We'll be needing these as we do the exercise. Let's go ahead and start Patreon, which I've gone ahead and done. Click a new file and navigate to the same folder I'll just call this new patch on database model. And then I'll go ahead and import the model. So source natron input type or select that natron input file and click apply. Once it's done importing, we'll use the model browser to review what's been done so far in the model. Here, if we look at our load cases, this is what we have. We have eight different load cases. If we look at our boundary conditions, we see that we have eight different forces. Let me make this low case the current one. You see it corresponds to force one, so that's here. If we jump to the next low case, we see that corresponds to force two. And you see if we try and click on any of the other forces, they won't turn on because they're not in the sub case or load case. If I go back to, or if I switch to load case three, turn that one on, I can see that um, boundary condition. In every video I've done in the past regarding fatigue, um, first thing we do is we go ahead and create uh, the fatigue properties for the material. So let me go ahead and right click on the material and show the properties. We see that the stress life properties have already been created for us, so there's no need to, to go in here. Um, so we can cancel out of that. This is where I can go ahead and actually begin the fatigue example. Here under properties, let's go ahead and right click on that and modify. Under layer, let's switch this to worst. And then for surface finish, we'll switch that to none. So again, layer is the worst and surface finish is none. Click OK here. Under application region, make sure every element is listed here in the application region. Click OK and hit apply. And now let's go ahead and actually start creating um, the analysis for this. Um, one thing we'll need before that is we'll need to create a group with just the inner elements. So I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Right click on group and click create. Call this one inner elements. And under entity selection, we are going to go ahead and select these inner elements. So make sure this cursor is blinking here in this little box. Let's click on the FEM entity so we know to only click on quad elements. And the way you get here again is um, you see the menu like this. Click on this finite element icon. It opens once. Click on this icon element and it'll open a second menu and click on quad elements. So at this point, you're just gonna click and select elements. It won't click nodes or any other elements. It'll just select quad elements. But here, I don't want to manually click one by one. I'll select the polygon pick method. What this lets me do is I start in one point and then I simply go around the model and circle at the minimum the nodes I want to um, include. So here, that's what I'm doing. Click, click, and click as you go around essentially becomes a connect the dots game here. And feel free to skip ahead if you um, find this part kind of dull. And then here at the end, simply click this square and it finishes the picking and now I've selected all the inner elements. You'll notice they've all been dropped here. Click apply and now I have one group with just these inner elements. So here, if I uncheck this, that's what I have. And let me go ahead and click the default group again. The default group has every element, has every node, and so on. 
the group right now, inner elements, just has the inner elements. Now here under the analysis tab, click on entire model. And you'll notice that the group tab is still open here on the right. Click cancel to close that. Click entire model again just to make sure we have an analyzed entire model full run here on the right. Under the job name, let me add V1 to it, or rather V2. Under solution type, let's make sure it's set to linear static. Under solution parameters, under fatigue parameters, make sure that we have supplied 96 here to the serenity of survival and hit enter. And you'll notice that the bar here moves. So you can manually move it or you can uh, just type in the number here and supply it that way. Under stress life, check on run SN analysis. And for mean stress correction, type in Goodman. Hit OK. For results output format, go ahead and click OP2. Hit OK on all these windows afterwards. And it's okay if uh, a lot of this information seems uh, unfamiliar. If you want to learn more about every setting I've just defined, we have the documentation here that has everything explained and detailed. So here, I'm currently working on the subcases for this. I clicked on subcases and it opened up this menu here. Select subcase 1. And we all have to do, or the only thing we have to do is click on one subcase. And the parameters for that, at least the fatigue ones, get applied to every subcase after that. So I'm selected subcase, which is pointing to load case 1. And under output results, I'll click and scroll down to fatigue life. And so it's been added to the list of output requests. The thing is, it's going to go ahead and produce a fatigue result for every element in the model. But we don't want that. We just want fatigue life for the inner elements. And if you recall that one group that has the inner elements, we'll use that to our advantage right now. So click advance here and it'll open up more properties here on the right. So again, before it's on basic, switch that to advanced. Under type of include data, let's just select groups here in the pull down menu and select the inner elements group. So here you'll see that it changed and it added a few things so it knows to use inner group inner elements. Hit OK here. Hit apply. Click yes to overwrite the previous subcase definition. Click cancel. And now we're done with subcases. Let's move over to subcase select. Here we don't want to run the default subcase. There's just nothing attributed to that subcase. Let's go ahead and add all the load cases or subcases right now. So one all the way down to eight. And let's click on define fatigue load sequences. And we'll go ahead and create event one. Here we'll need four rows. So to do that, use this box, type in four and hit enter. Confirm the update. And now you have four rows. For this first subcase, it'll be subcase one. Next subcase will be subcase three, then five, and then seven. Here I made a mistake, so let me go back to that cell and select 7. And all of this is detailed in the PDF link. So low case 1, 3, 5, and 7, and I should have that here, 1, 3, 5, and 7. For time history, as long as you're working in the same folder where the Nastron input file and all those DAC files, you'll see the DAC files listed here. So for row 1, we should go ahead and point it to X pause, X pause. The next one is Y pause, I believe. Next one is X nag, followed by Y nag. And for a load magnitude, I'll type in 0.924, hit enter to confirm that update. 1.023 for the next one, or rather this should be one. The load magnitude should be 1.023. The next one should be 1.121. Then the next one should be 1.218. And now this confirms uh, our creation of the event one. Here, let's go ahead and add a new sequence, add a new event, and point it to this event we just created. Click apply. And now this event has been created and is pointing to event one, and you see the name here. 
I have to make one last modification to the load sequence. Right click on that and click edit sequence. So the way it's configured right now, every repeat of loading equals one repeat. But we want to say that every repeat of loading is equal to 1,000 flights. So type in 1,000 here and type in flights. Hit apply and you'll see this update happen. So now it says 1,000 flights. Hit OK. Hit OK here. And we're pretty much ready to analyze this. Let's go ahead and click apply. Now Strunk comes up and is analyzing this example. Once done, we'll go ahead and attach our OP2. So under the analysis tab, under access results, click attach output to. Since we're working in the same folder, we don't have to manually click on select result file and look for the file. We just we can just click apply. And once done, we'll jump over to results and review our results. The first value we'll want to go ahead and look at is the log of life of flights. So in your select result cases, you'll notice there's a lot, of, a lot of data, such as critical angle damage and so on, but we're interested in just log of life flights. Now, we don't want to look at the quick plot. Let's click on cursor. So it's just a marker and select scalar here. So it should say create marker scalar. Click on mounting lug and scroll down again to your log of life flights and click apply. You'll notice that there are results just for the inner rings. There's a ton of data displayed here, so we can fix that. Go to display attributes. We'll change the scale factor to 0 0.03. The scalar style should be uh, just the dot and click apply. you notice the dots are a lot smaller, but there's a value for each dot. We don't want that. So we'll just uncheck show scalar label. And now we just have um, dots. If we look at here on the right, we'll see that we have a minimum log of life of flights of 6.38. So we refer back to the BDAV. That is the expected result of this. And that's what we get, 6.378. So that's the log of life of um, flights. If you wanted to look at the damage or log of life or log damage, we can do that as follows. So let's go back to uh, select results and switch this to log damage. Click apply. And we see that the highest damage is a uh, 3.88. If we go back to the PDF document, we see that um, that's exactly what we get at the same location. So it'd be element 165, grid 1120. So it'd be here. You can always zoom in to, to get a better view of where that is. And that's essentially how you perform this example.